everyone, Jessica Kubasi here. In today's tutorial, I'm going to be going over how to create a photo manipulation using a bit of stock and some texture. This is fairly easy and it's really helpful because, it, uh, because you use different techniques in Photoshop and you can also use this for your photography as well. This is more graphic design based, but I do see a lot of photographers um, photo manipulating their pictures. So, I mean, if that's the route you want to take, uh, I can show you how. So first thing, I just went and collected some nebula textures and then some transparent butterfly stock. And you can find this on DeviantArt, Google. I'll have some links to these um, in the description for where I got them. And I actually have a wide variety of textures on my website. This one I made myself, so I'll have a link to all that. But first, what we're going to do is start with this image that I have here. And then I've already imported the transparent butterflies. Okay, So we're going to start out with the monarch butterflies. And again, they're transparent, which is great. And you want to start out at a bigger size so that you can scale it later if you want. Now, personally, what I do is I make a copy. And then I just hide the other copy just in case I make a mistake. Now, first what we're going to want to do is select the butterflies that we want to use for this image. And I'm going to go one by one. I want them separate, each on a separate raster layer. And it'll be easier to do this because you can control each separate butterfly. You don't have to work in like a, like a large group. So um, taking the lasso tool, just go ahead and literally just trace around the one that you want. And then... Command X to cut it, and then Command V just to paste it back on there. And then I'm just going to put this up here. And again, go back to your original layer with the bunch of monarch butterflies, and then cut the rest of them out. So. So. What you can do now to give this some variety, and we're going to add more, so don't worry. If you press Command-T, you can do a lot to this. Now, Command-T basically means like to transform whatever the selection that you have. So I'm going to right-click and then put flip horizontal. And then I'm going to just hold Shift and scale it just a little bit. So you're holding Shift, so it proportionately you know, scales. If you don't hold Shift, this is what happens. It does this kind of thing, like, yeah. So hold shift, and it will proportionately scale. So I'm going to put this right here. And then what I'm going to do is Command J, duplicate this same layer. I just duplicated it. I'm going to press Command T again to transform, holding shift, and just make it a little larger. Now, this will kind of give it, like, it got stuck in the lens kind of effect, you know what I mean? Like the butterfly was really like, just didn't want to go away. It's all up in there. <laughs> it's all up in your lens. I'm trying to do it so that it's, I mean, it's going to look, I mean, there we go. You can put like half of its wing right there. And I'm going to show you guys why we have that there. It, it looks really like awkward. You're probably like, whoa, it's trying to attack her. So again, uh, if you press command and you click, you can select each layer, so you don't have to sit there and press this. If you Again, hold Command and click, and you can select each layer. So usually what I'll do now is really just duplicate, make some smaller, make some not so small. And then now we have a whole stack of butterflies, which I will make into another folder. Cut out. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is start adding the color around. And But, you know, actually before I do that, let's go ahead and make these fit more into the picture. So what I'm going to do is take a brush and make a new layer. And I'm going to put this as burn. So again, Command-Shift-N for a new layer. 
again, just new raster layer and then go ahead and we're gonna do soft light. And make sure your foreground color is set to black. And your opacity, you can keep it around like 60%. So now what I'm gonna do is just kind of go over like the edges of the butter, just so I can kind of mesh into the picture a little more. And then for the larger butterflies, what you can do is select the ones that you put on the sides, the really large ones, go to filter, blur, and then Gaussian blur. And really, you can do it, well, not that much, but you can do kind of like eight, like eight pixels, I guess. It really just depends on, again, your preference. But just to make it look like it's in, well, actually, this was kind of good. The way it was okay so okay now I feel like we can go ahead and start coloring let me save it before okay if we go to layer new adjustment layer hue saturation we're just going to desaturate just a tiny bit and we can always change this the set then the amount of saturation and then we're gonna go to layer new adjustment layers hue saturation one more time now the reason we're going to do this one more time is because I want to actually change the color of all the surrounding green. So if you go ahead, you can pick whatever color you want. My preference right now is like a pink because I just, I guess I just like that color. So again, just playing with the slider, you're not playing with anything else but the hue. And then what you're going to want to do is go to layer, new adjustment layer, and then curves. And now is where I'm going to add some extra colors. So if you go to blue and you, it really just depends on, what, again, what color you're using, but I'm using pink for the sake of this tutorial. So I'm going to go ahead and use this blue. You can just play around with curves a little bit. And I have a whole tutorial about curves. And depending on what kind of style you want the picture, you can make it more vintage, but for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to keep it a little cleaner, like just add a little bit more contrast to it. And now as you can see, she, I mean, it, she looks like she's sick right now, but don't worry, we're going to fix it. What you're going to want to do is holding shift, select all of your the layers that you use to colorize this and then press command G. And then what you're going to want to do is add a mask to this entire folder. And then while you're still on that mask, you're going to take a black color, opacity, let's keep it to 99, and then you're just going to color over the model, whoever, and have her show through. Now you're going to want to be a little bit more precise with coloring. So now that it looks like I have most of it colored, and also I just went over slightly on the butterflies because I wanted still some of that purple to show. So now that we have a nice base for the color, again, we just masked out all the colors that we didn't want, and that's before and that's after. Um, if you do change your mind and you want to do another color, you can just choose the hue saturation layer that we already did and just slide it over and you can pick any color that you want you don't have to redo it again 
but again I'm choosing that kind of pink color there we go okay so another thing that I want to add is a curves layer just to kind of solidify the entire thing and it's going to be a basic curves layer And then I'm going to go to new adjustment layer and then color balance because I do want to add another layer of color. I want to add a layer of color balance just to make everything kind of fit into one another. And I'm mostly choosing like the yellow tones just to kind of make it a little, make everything blend together a little more. Because it doesn't look like it is right now. It looks like it kind of is. It's kind of trying. I'm just trying a couple of different layers here. I think I'm just going to keep it on normal, actually. And if you don't think that the butterflies are really meshing in together, again, you can take the blur tool and blur in all the edges. I think I'm, that's what I'm going to end up doing right now. Um going back to the cutout butterflies and then blurring out the edges a little bit more. Okay, and one more thing I'm gonna do is go to layer, new adjustment layer, and then selective color. And I'm just gonna start out with the reds and kind of bring out even more that the red color in the leaves. And you can if you switch over the reds and you bring down the magenta or bring up the magenta, you can make it even more colorful. But again, just your preference. I, mean, I don't want it that much. I mean, it doesn't look real, I guess. Okay, let's see. I usually just play with yellows and um, yellows and reds. I think that looks pretty good. And I'm going to drag the selective color layer down to that group so that I won't really affect the model so much because it made her skin tone a little bit red. So another thing that I can do to make this kind of blend more together well, I don't really know that if there's a formal name for these, but they're I call I refer to them as like color bubbles. And you're gonna want to make sure the hardness of your brush is zero, and it can be a rather large brush. Make sure that it's set to overlay to begin, and opacity you can do like 33 for now. And you can just choose a lighter color, or you know let's not do overlay. Let's start at screen, so you can kind of just go over slightly each one and this is where having a tablet really helps out and I'm using just a larger brush and going over some of these areas and I'll show you the difference that it makes in just a moment so this is before and that's after and then I'm just gonna make another raster layer and then I'm gonna choose that orange color but I want it to be a little bit brighter and I set this layer to overlay this time and I'm just going to lower this opacity because I don't want it too bright Now I'm just seeing how it looks when I put it to screen, which doesn't look that bad. It actually looks pretty cool. So I just made the same layer and I put it to screen. So I think that, I mean, this kind of gets the point across for my tutorial. I mean, how to, how to add in stock. I want to do a, a tutorial that's a little bit more in-depth, but this kind of is a general overview. And I'm going to show you guys the before and after. So this is before and this is after. 
And I'm so compelled to add 50 billion more things to this because I want the after image to look as accurate as possible so you guys can see exactly how I did it. So I think this is the last thing I'm going to do. Just add a multiply solid color layer. That's it. I mean, really, that this is what's the problem with you know graphic design. You just want to make changes every two minutes. So if I just set that to darken, I think it gives it like a nice look. So we're going to keep it at darken. And the very last step that we're going to do is adding that nebula sparkle texture to our image. So what you're going to want to do is just drag one in there. And again, these can be found on, on my website. And I will have a link to where to get these. So I'm just going to scale it for, a, it's going to be a little larger. And I want to go from normal to screen. And I really already like how this looks. So I'm just going to position this a little to the center and then I'm just going to add a mask on it and then feather out the areas that aren't um, that aren't blended so again just added a mask take your brush tool with black and then go over these edges and then what I'm going to want to do what I'm going to do is press command J I'm going to duplicate it Press Command T, Shift, and then just angle it in a different way. And I'm going to go from screen to soft light. And as you can see, it kind of gives it like a different texture now. I make this just slightly larger so that it kind of spans the whole page. I don't want too much on the model. Not all the butterflies are lost. <laughs> but that's okay. It's okay. You, I mean, I'm sure people are going to know that they're butterflies. I hope. So you can just play around the, with the texture. And usually what I do for nebula textures, I set them to screen or lighten, either one. Or um, if you want them to kind of be a little contrasted, I would do, I mean, you could go hard light if you're really feeling crazy, but I usually just do overlay or soft light. So even overlay is giving it kind of like a nice look, actually. So we're going to keep it to overlay. And there it is. So just using a, a couple of stock butterflies and a nebula texture and a couple of adjustment layers and I was able to make this. I hope that you guys enjoyed it and I'm sorry if it was a little bit too long. Um, making graphic design tutorials is still a bit of a challenge but I'm trying to get a little bit better at it. So any suggestions or if you'd like to leave a comment about this particular tutorial please do and thank you guys for watching.